I wanted to do this um, video now going into Mother's Day. Um, I just don't know how I'll be feeling on Mother's Day. So I wanted to do it now. But um, it's just in honor of my mother. And actually two gifts I was given in the form of dreams. And um, some of you know that from time to time I've mentioned some of my dreams um, online. I don't do it often. You know, people are like, here she go with a dream again. But um, I found that a, a lot of the dreams that I don't tell, they're pretty much, they've been pretty much on point. And later I find myself saying, hmm, yeah, I knew that person was going to do that. Or, uh, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. But anyway, this... Uh, these are two dreams, and one was preceded my mother's death. Um, I only told my younger sister about this dream, and, well, I actually shared it with my oldest sister as well after my mother transitioned. Um, so I do the, talk about the first dream and then go into the second dream. But it was uh, kind of like forewarning of my mother's passing. My younger sister and I had gone to see my mother on the 25th, Christmas Day. And so on the next day, the 26th, when I, I woke up, I woke, awake, was awakened from a dream that kind of startled me. But after I started analyzing it and I typed it out and text it to my sister and I'm going to read you this um, text so I don't miss some things because that was December that's like six months ago so um, let's see here because usually dreams that I really want to make sure I capture the essence of them because you know they they leave your mind um, if you don't catch them soon as you woke up. So soon as I woke up, it was about 6.29 a.m. and I, I um, had written it all down. But I wrote here when I woke up on the 26th, I woke awoke from a very specific dream this morning. I was braiding mama's hair out at the nursing home. I told her I needed to take a break to use the bathroom. And a nurse, I made it specific because I was wondering, was this a real person? At the time, I was remembering, recapturing things in my dream before I woke up. There was a black nurse. She pulled me aside to ask if she could ask me some questions. But she never asked me any questions. She just gave me a message. I guess you'd say, she just stated, your mother isn't going to make it this time. And I asked her what she meant by that. And she wouldn't give me any more information than what she stated. And she walked away. But I remember specifically looking at her name tag before she walked away because I was suspicious of her telling me that. And it made me wonder about her. And I was going to ask um, another staff member about her. Like, who is she? Because even then, I knew in my waking life, and then the dream, it's like I was very aware. I did not recall this person, had never seen them. But anyway, I woke up, and I looked at the time. It was 6.29 a.m. So, of course, I wasn't going back to sleep, and I instantly recalled her name. Angelina Blondike. Now that's a very odd name, especially for a black person. Blondike, B-L-O-N-D-I-K-E. Like a Klondike bar, but it's Blondike with a B. B Blondike. Um, 
the more our thing is that when I googled Angelina Blondike to see what I get. I knew Angelina, though I looked it up anyway. I like to mostly when I dream, it has to do with um, coats and symbols. It, it never really is, rarely is it about the person or the actual events in the dream. It's like God always has me zone in on the the symbols of things to define them. So Angelina, I knew was Angel, and I looked up the name um, Angelina, but more specifically, the woman represented a messenger. Blondike, I didn't get. And I was thinking, when I look up this name, there's nothing going to be in it. It, it seems like a made-up name. But ironically, now, get this, knowing my mother, this is why it's significant. Knowing everything she had been, over, been through throughout the years. Blondike, when I looked up that name, it brought me to an account for a person who used that name, Blondike, um, the account, the alter ego, I guess you say, name was Lady Lazarus. Now get the person in the dream, Angelina, who's a messenger, uh, last name Blondike, really was the messenger pointing to Lady Lazarus, wasn't going to make it this time. And why that is so significant to me is because we often say my mother was like a woman with nine lives. And if you know the story of Lazarus in the Bible, Lazarus was resurrected by Jesus. My mother had come back from flatlining twice in her life, twice. The most recent time was in 2020. Um, so I had to realize, though, in the dream, it was I was upset because it's like, who is this woman coming up to me telling me my mother isn't going to make it this time? So my mind got to turn like, okay, somebody's doing something. But when I woke and started analyzing the dream, it's what I knew God was trying to tell me all along. You know, as your parents get older, and I guess I started thinking about it even more so after my mother, uh, mother had died. My mother, that was really so hard for her when my grandmother died. Um... And it had me reflecting on who I hope I never have to go through this. And that's so stupid. It's like everybody passes from this life. Um but I just like I didn't I didn't want to deal with that. But we have been given so much time. And given that my mother um her passing wasn't a surprise, and like I said, I already knew, but it's like that was a gift for me that dream um though you you are leery about sharing it with others um siblings because you know um you know it's just hard to let go of anyone but especially letting go of a parent but considering what my mother came back from in 2020 and even um when she had surgery on her colon she had colon cancer back in 2002 
I want to say 2002, 2003. I get the years mixed up sometimes. But, um, yeah, so that Angelina Blondike, I knew she was a messenger and her last name was pointing to an account when I looked up Blondike. It pointed me to Lady Lazarus. So I knew specifically my dream was about my mother because it pointed to the number of times we have said and her, one of my mother's um, primary doctors that she had for a long time, uh, when my mother came home from the hospital in 2000, temporarily, I'm sorry, in 2020, temporarily, the doctor had said, um, uh, Miss Beard, you like a woman with nine lives. So I knew this stream was very significant. And I said, no one could make up that name Blondike. I'm like, I don't even know if this name exists. But sure enough, when I looked it up, it was a real name. And it pointed me to Lady Lazarus. But anyway, so the second dream was after my mother's passing. My mother transitioned um, on February 3rd, 2024, this year. And we buried her body on February 5th. I'm sorry, Fe that's my birthday. February 14th, Valentine's Day. We had the funeral and, and buried her body on the same day. And... Uh, Yeah, so anyway, um, that was on the 14th, and then two days later, the 16th, I woke up from a dream, and this dream I had never shared with um, my brother, the brother that uh, was, there was a, one of my brothers was in this dream, um, William, he's the third brother so I never shared it with him until now um he got a copy of this video um but I did share it with my younger sister but this dream I didn't fully understand it either of course until I really took time and analyzed it but in this dream there was my younger sister was in this dream with me. My younger sister and my brother, my third brother, was in this dream. And I was confused because I was like, I didn't know where we were. Um, it seemed like we were at a funeral home, but I... I knew in my dream that my mother, we had already had the funeral services. So I was confused that why were we back here again? But when I woke up, I clearly understood it. So we were in this place. It looked like it could have been a funeral home. And there were people... Like they were sitting there waiting. It appeared at the time like people were waiting to have their funeral services. But you'll understand a minute why I say this isn't what it was. So all of a sudden, I saw a casket. You know how sometimes in dreams, it's like things make transitions and it don't it doesn't make sense. So anyway, I saw this casket and all of a sudden I saw my mother's body out of the casket. And I was telling my younger sister and this brother, I was like, do you all, are you all seeing this? Because I'm like, you all are right here with me. I know you see it. You got to see this. I like, are you all seeing it? And they look like they were speechless. I don't know if they were just speechless or they didn't see it. Well, the next flash in the, the dream after seeing my mother's body outside this casket, she almost looked like 
these, you know, the show, the night of the living dead. It's like she wasn't all there. And her body half, half looked half decay. And I can't remember. I don't really recall what my younger sister's expression was in the stream. But I remember my brother that was with us in the stream. And he looked really sad. And I was like, this is not her. And I, then I turned and started talking to my younger sister. I was talking to both of them. I said, you all, this is not, that's not her. It's like, don't, don't go there. That's not her. I said, that's, I, I mean, I was speaking with sh such strong conviction. That, whatever that is you're seeing, that's not her. I kept saying, that's not her. And then it was like, hold on. And then all of a sudden, it was like these caskets were being received. So I'm not trying to tell you how things happen in the afterlife. I'm just telling you how God gave me this dream and, and you do with it as you will. But anyway, it was like that was what we I saw. And then next up was a was a transition to seeing it's like my mother's body or casket was then ready to be presented. Her casket was ready to be presented because we had seen it off to the side. It's like her casket hadn't been presented to where I don't know where we were. Like I said, I was confused because I was like, are we in a funeral home or what is it? But it's like, it seemed like it was a place for other people were there too with, I guess, their loved ones, but they were waiting or looking. Um, they were witnessing things going on with their loved ones, body and cast. But my mother's casket was like her casket came up to be received. And at this point, it's like the casket opened. And when she got out, I was like, okay, you are, are you seeing this? This is her. This is her. And my mother, when she got out, it, I cannot describe her. She was so vibrant and alive. Um, part of me was thinking, does she, do she, do she see me? Does she see, does, can she see us? But after I woke up, I could tell I was just witnessing the dream. I don't think she was even aware of us there. It's almost like we were witnessing it. So she, when she came up out of this casket, she, she was her, but I would say I would compare her to... If, but this was like her, the permanent state of her body. If I had to fit or describe what she looked like, it was like the somewhere in between the 30 and the 40 year old version of her. And when I say this, I hope I don't offend anyone that may be watching this. It was like, you know, that stage where you say black don't crack. So I knew she didn't look like a 20 year old. And I believe in the afterlife, age has nothing to do with it. But I'm just trying to state what she looked like. She didn't look like the age she was when she died. Even before she got sick, she didn't look like that age. But it's like she had transitioned back and this was her permanent state of being. So somewhere in the 30s and 40s stage, which my mother always looked younger than what she was um, when we were younger. So she looked like that and her hair was all white, but it wasn't a white where, you know, you gray white. It's like this was the natural color of her hair, but her hair also kind of had some arid distance to it you know the iridescence where it's almost like things can change color depending on how you move it and it reflects 
Only thing is, my mother wasn't getting other colors in her hair. It's only was reflecting a blue, like the darkest sky blue or the darkest kind of water, um, that color blue, not royal blue, but a deep, rich blue. It, but it was, her hair was white, but like I said, the iridescence was reflective of blue, no other colors. And the same thing with what she had on. When I woke up, I was trying to figure out what did I see, see on her? And only thing I could think of, it was a, a white robe, but not like a robe like we may would think. But this robe, it was long, like a down to her ankles. And, you know, they sing the song, I'm going to put on my robe. So I don't know if this is just what I dreamt. It was, uh, it had iridescence to it as well but it only reflected blue the so i guess you could say what she had on was like glass but i don't think the texture the texture wasn't glass but it was something out of this world i, I cannot describe what i was seeing it was something out of this this world for us the material it was white but it almost looked like it could have a pattern but it wasn't a pattern but anyway, all of a sudden, after she had gotten out and I was looking at her, she got out and when she looked down at herself, I don't want to blow your eardrums out, but the way she was hollering and screaming, it's like she looked at her legs and she, everything just started flaking everywhere. Her arms, her, her legs, she was jumping up and down and she just, she was so excited that she just took off running and I wanted to say something to her. But again, I don't know if she, she looked at me. I thought she looked at me, but maybe she looked through me and she just took off running and she was running. And, and as long as she was running, I, I could hear her, her voice see further and further away. The more she ran, I don't know where I can't even describe where we were at. I didn't see trees, but everything just looked like you were in the country, but it was blue it was so pure there, but she just took off running and she was screaming. She was excited about her legs and her, her, her feet and she was just overjoyed. And then the next thing I knew, I woke up. But I tell you, that dream gave me a peace like none other. We say what we hope, we say what we believe, and we say, you know, well, people tell you, I hate to hear that. They're in a better place. But that spoke such comfort to me, having that dream. And again, I don't often share my dreams because you don't know what people think. And then people have ideals about how you decipher your dreams but anyway that was my dream and what God gave me but anyway I just want to share that uh, coming up on this Mother's Day um yeah that's all I have to say so like I said we buried my mother's body but the spirit, the soul is eternal. And I just would say to anybody else out there dealing with the loss of a mother, um, I hope you have peace on this day. But even more so, I hope you are living the life that you can have confidence. I hope that we all can have confidence that we will ascend to this faraway country that is not earthly, but the, the place where our creator is. Um, so to all you mothers out there, Happy Mother's Day.